What's going on guys? Today I wanted to go over an awesome stock that has a lot of news around it, has a lot of positive things going for it. It was kind of an underlying stock that didn't get a whole ton of attention during earnings other than the split news. It really kind of passed by under the radar. It didn't have a ton of good things going for it, but it also didn't have a ton of bad things going for it, and that is Google stock. So I hope you enjoy the video. We're gonna go over the PE ratio, looking at valuations, looking at price targets for the future. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. And if you do enjoy the video, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you wanna see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. So overall, Google had a great week. So running into kind of the start, the first few days of the week, uh, we had Google creeping up into earnings, so people kind of anticipated good news, but they weren't certain that it was going to be good. So as earnings announced, we saw the stock spike up from 2700 to three thousand dollars over three thousand and then it kind of drained off a little as the week went on and again that has to do with market sentiment uh things kind of a, a lot of volatility in the market more earnings being announced and, and different things facebook kind of announced in here uh which probably had a, a small drag on the stock but overall we see a lot of positives kind of uh, in google's chart by itself and uh, as we mentioned a lot of that came uh basically all of that came on on the uh, earnings beat so they beat earnings by 12.52 percent and revenue was fairly decent as well they beat revenue by 4.87 percent as you can see kind of down here so overall a lot of positive things going for uh google stock but if you look at the six months chart really the the earnings just re-cemented the kind of preconceived notion that that um, google is worth around three thousand dollars so you can see here all of kind of um the end of October through the end of December, Google was already trading in that $3,000 range. And there was a lot of volatility in there, kind of as we saw with the market, a lot of small cap volatility. And then we know kind of throughout the month of uh, January that a lot of the large cap stocks actually ended up kind of getting hurt. So a lot of these earnings just basically reassures investor confidence in the companies and brought it back to kind of levels that we saw uh, previously. So overall, a positive thing, but now let's get into some of the statistics behind Google and where they're sitting at financially. So I like looking at their statistics here on Yahoo Finance. So what I'm mainly looking at is their forward PE ratio. So their forward PE, PE ratio is kind of a huge metric of, of where do we see the company going over time, right? What, how are, does its price compare to its forward earnings? So right now we're sitting at a 25.64, which is actually very comparative to their trailing PE ratio. But when we look kind of at the past, right, 25, 25 kind of in here through 2021, but when you go back a little bit further, you're seeing a lot of 30s in here. So that kind of alludes to, right, their forward P ratio right now is lower than it has been in the past. And we'll hear here in a second, look at what it's kind of averaged over the last five years. But this 30 mark uh, kind of tells us, right, that we're, we're five, uh, basically five points below that mark right now, which alludes to kind of some under, undervaluation of the stock and uh, overall a potential time to get into the stock at a, a reasonable price. Another thing I like looking at on Yahoo Finance are companies' balance sheets. They have you, uh, give you a good opportunity to look into how the company is actually managed, what's prioritized at the company. Are they taking on a lot of debt or are they stacking cash? And Google is one of those companies that has probably a top 10 balance sheet uh, in the world. You could throw Apple, uh, Amazon, Facebook, Microsoft, a lot of those companies kind of fall in a similar range, uh, and Google is, is in that category of, of companies. And what we're looking at here is their current assets compared to basically their their current assets and long-term assets compared to their current liabilities and long-term liabilities. And what you're seeing here is you have $188 billion uh, in current assets compared to current liabilities of only $64 billion. So here you have a 3x uh, basically of current assets compared to current liabilities and that's massive right because what you're seeing there is in the short term Google has the opportunity if they need to pay off debt if they get into a bad situation they have plenty of current cash current assets that they could either liquidate uh, and basically be in a good financially stable position right if there's a recession anything like that they're gonna be okay so that's overall a positive thing uh, and then long term, you always like to see uh, the, a similar kind of trend, right? Because you have long term debt cycles and short term debt cycles. But basically, here you're seeing Google has uh, current, uh, or sorry, non current assets of 171 billion 
compared to non-current uh, liabilities of 43 billion. So there you have over a 4X of uh, basically non-current assets to non-current liabilities. Again, for the same reason, uh, this is this is huge. And a lot of companies don't have balance sheets that look uh, this amazing. So overall, uh, a plus here from Google. I talked about this a minute ago. I like looking at the trend of the forward PE ratio over time and kind of see how uh, things are changing and, and how they've kind of uh, adjusted over over a certain period of time. Obviously in, in 2020, right, we saw this big downturn. So you saw the PE ratio of Google fall off quite a bit. Uh, and we're almost in a similar kind of area. You know, if, if you look at this, we're around 21 here back in March of, of 2020, and we're only at 25. So a little bit higher, uh, but not too significant. And then you can see back in 2018, kind of throughout 2018, uh, Google is actually trading at a premium uh, compared to its earnings. So we would have to go back and look at what news kind of came in there, uh, but it looks like probably Google had a poor earnings report uh, back in the, kind of the start of the, the year, and overall that kind of made them trade at a, a premium. And then it looks like in 2019, the start of 2019, they probably had a great earnings report that uh, ran down their, their PE ratio. So overall, uh, what I'm really looking at is we're looking at five years, and we have a minimum PE ratio of 21.48, a max of 65.47, uh, and we want to see kind of these two numbers in here. So the average and the median. I pay a little bit more attention to the average. Uh, that's going to have a slightly more weighted uh, to the upside because of this 65.47, uh, but the median is generally close to the same, uh, a little bit lower. So I, I don't really mind looking at either of these two numbers. And here's where things get a little bit more interesting. So let me zoom this in for you guys a little bit so you can see it. Uh, and we have basically a comparative of Google, Microsoft, and Apple. And what I like doing here is taking the price, uh, and we've done a split adjusted price just so you have a general idea of where the price, uh, if, if Google split right now, they're doing a 20 to one split. If they split right now, they'd be around $143.79. And then their current PE ratio, uh, like we talked about earlier in the video, is uh, this is their current forward PE ratio, and that's that 25.64 number that we grabbed from Yahoo Finance. And then that uh, forward PE ratio, the five-year forward PE ratio, that was that 33.80. And then we've grabbed these two PE ratios. So Microsoft, I'm saying, is a comparable company to Google. They have a lot of similar kind of industries that they're in. And then Apple is also comparative as well. Uh, obviously, Google has the Google Pixel. They're doing a lot of cloud uh, things as, as well as Apple uh, is kind of taking on similar similar uh, type of industries. So here we're kind of looking at their forward P ratios. Again, these are just taken from uh, Yahoo Finance. So we can jump over here real quick. You can see 20 or sorry, 32.57 for the forward P ratio for Microsoft. And then if we jump over here for Apple, we have 28.90. Uh, forward P ratio. So if we jump back here, right, that's where we filled those in at. So Apple, in my opinion, is probably the least comparable company out of these. So if we look at that kind of comparison, we can actually see, and let me actually block, uh, open this up as well so you can see what we're actually looking at. So these are price targets. So what we're doing is we're doing a ratio, basically, uh, here's the math behind it. We're taking the uh, current price, multiplying it by basically the potential forward PE ratio, and then dividing it by the current uh, PE ratio. And what we can see is if we do that, uh, if, if Google were to go to a forward PE ratio of 28.90, the price would actually be thirty two sorry $3,200. Uh, and forty-one dollars and thirty-eight cents, and that represents a twelve percent return if you were to purchase the stock right now at, at twenty-eight hundred uh, and seventy-five dollars. And if you adjust that for the split, that would be uh, hundred and sixty-two dollars and seven cents. So again, that's a that would be a twelve percent return compared to if you bought it at one hundred and forty-three dollars and seventy-nine cents. Again, I believe this is probably the least comparable. Uh, of the kind of three here. Obviously, Google is going to be most comparable to itself, but here we can look at how those stats compare to Microsoft here. So Microsoft, uh, if you take the forward fee ratio for Microsoft at 32.57, and again, adjust kind of do the math that we just showed you on Apple, we actually get $3,653. $3 and that represents a 27% return, which is an excellent return. 
uh, on, again, if you were to purchase the stock at $2,875 and it were to run up to uh, $3,653. And again, adjusted, that would be $182.75. Uh, and, and here, we're going to look at basically Google compared to itself. So Google compared to itself, uh, this I believe is probably the most accurate representation. And right, we're seeing that their forward P ratio is 33.8. Uh, and if they were to actually run up into that, that average over the five year uh, P ratio, uh, they would actually have a stock price of almost $3,800 here. And that represents a 30, almost 32% return and would be a split adjusted um, price of $189.55. And the final thing I like looking at is at analyst expectations for the stock. So here we have the Wall Street Journal and kind of their, their market analysis of the stock. Uh, overall, we can see that there are 40 analysts covering uh, this stock that are rating it as a buy. There are six analysts rating it as an overweight, and then one analyst actually rating it as a hold. And what I like looking at the most is their current uh, kind of price targets. So we can see there's a high of 30, 3,900, median of 3,500, and low of 2,930, with an average of $3,481.13. So we're going to take that number and we're actually going to jump back over here to the spreadsheet and we're going to enter it and look at how that compares to kind of our other targets. So if you plug that, that uh, P ratio in, you can see, or sorry, that price target in, uh, you can see basically right there, they're targeting $3,400 and $3,481 for a final price. And that represents a return of 21% and a split adjusted price of $174.05. So overall, this is actually kind of, in my opinion, a more conservative estimate. You can see the, the higher end price target uh, for analysts, if you remember over here, was 3900 and that's even higher than our price target here. So they're probably closer to maybe a 35% uh, return on that. I don't think it's unreasonable to kind of expect around a 25 to 30% to return for Google over the kind of the coming years. They have a good balance sheet. They have a lot of kind of positive things going for them. Uh, I don't really see their, their business model collapsing. I think they've kind of branched out into a lot of uh, other industries, whether it's the cloud space, actually producing phones, uh, a lot of kind of positive things that have kind of been, been going for the company uh, relatively. So. I think their stock's probably in a good spot. I do think there are probably better opportunities out there if you look at a lot of the small caps, but overall, I wouldn't be opposed to buying more of it, especially when the stock kind of splits. You see a lot of uh, price run-ups, as you kind of saw with Apple. So overall, I hope you enjoyed the video. Obviously, this isn't financial advice. Make your kind of own, own decisions. Look at the kind of the, the facts that were presented in this video and make your own decisions based off them. Look at the numbers for yourself. Kind of see where you feel comfortable getting in at. Uh, and then if you feel comfortable with purchasing, then obviously purchase uh, some Google shares. So overall, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, make sure you drop a like down below. And if you want to see more videos like this one, make sure you hit that sub button. Otherwise, have a wonderful rest of your day.